Welcome to Chatting with the Experts, a podcast for immigrant women like me from Africa and the Caribbean who have relocated to the UK or the US or Canada or even Australia. In this podcast, we talk about our struggles, but we also highlight our triumphs that we have experienced while living abroad, and we share our resources and experiences with our fellow immigrant sisters. And today is no exception. I have an awesome and exceptional guest, and she's a fellow Caribbean sister. Taria Hodge lives and well, she lives in the Virgin Island, but the fun fact about her is that she sometimes lives in Maryland, which is in the U.S. So we are going to learn more about her. And so I want to say welcome to chatting with the experts, Toria. And please tell my audience all about you. Oh, wow. Well, first of all, Podcast Paula, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your platform, Chatting with the Experts. It is truly an honor. (laughs) Ah, uh, thank yeah. you for saying yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know, I, I couldn't resist when, you know, I, I see another influencer in the marketplace and I, you know, and they're up to big things, which I definitely know that you are up to big things as well. And I said, you know what? What a unique idea that you have to interview immigrant women from, you know, all parts of the world, you you know, moving into the United States. And it's such a great idea. And I just bet that you have all sorts of amazing conversations. Absolutely. I mean, it's almost like I now have so many different homes or so many invitations to different parts of the world. You know, every time they ask me, I say, yes, I haven't been there yet, but I plan on going to each and every invitation that I've had, I've been given. Wow. So, yay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So tell us about yourself. Oh, boy. Myself. Well, where do I start? Like you mentioned before, I'm from St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. And here's another fun fact for um, your listening audience who don't know, St. Thomas is part of the U.S. Virgin Islands. So I am actually an American citizen. So there are a lot of um, island nations and island countries in the Caribbean. And we just happen to be U.S. citizens as well. And so a little bit about me, born and raised here in the Virgin Islands. And I made, you know, my trek to the U.S., specifically Washington, D.C., Maryland area, to attend college. So I attended Howard University. And it was just one of those things. I fell in love with the area. I think the D.C. metropolitan area, it's such a a wonderful melting pot. One of the things that I loved about it is that it gave me the opportunity to connect with other Caribbean people, mostly Trinidad, but all people from all over. So I immediately felt at home in that area. And then, you know, of course, life happens. So I end up getting married, having kids. And that's where I kind of laid my hat or hung my hat, as they say, for quite a number of years. Wow, wow, wow. And you know, I have a special part of my heart in Maryland because I lived there. So when I found out that you lived in Maryland and the more we spoke, we realized we live pretty we're close right, to each we're other. We're right up the street from each other. Yeah. So we plan on meeting. So there's something that Taria has not mentioned. She told us that she went to school. She went to college at Howard. She married, had children here in Maryland. But I met her on a professional platform. And that's what thrilled me about her because once when I knew that, okay, she's from the Caribbean too. And then when I found out what she was doing, which I will let her share with you, I was bowled over. So Taria, tell us about your professional life. I have the wonderful opportunity to be able to call myself a social media strategist. And what I do is I empower entrepreneurs, specifically coaches, consultants, and thought leaders to get their authentic message into Mm -hmm. the marketplace. So one of the things that I say all the time is that we are all required to shine. And when I talk about shine is the ability to show up powerfully and consistently on social media, 
hone in on your divine clients, those people that you are called to serve, being able to make an impact and influence in the marketplace, nurture, and then overall create an experience for your audience where you're able to take them on that journey of transformation. So I have been in the social media space for over 10 years, and I've had the wonderful opportunity to see social media grow you know, into something that every entrepreneur should have as part of their business. When I first started, I know the conversation used to be, why should I be on social media? You know, it's a big waste of time. I have no time to do it. And now almost 10, 12, 15 years later, if your business doesn't have a social media component, then it's more than likely lacking, you know, or, or, you know, you're not doing as much as you can do to serve your audience. I'm glad you said so. I'm glad you touched on the fact that a few years ago, people thought, you know, well, why would you go on social media? It's a waste of time. But now they realize the importance of business owners being on social media. I remember the first time I saw uh, an organization on social media, I was shocked because my concept of social media was that to socialize with people, you know, mm-hmm. not even for businesses to be on that because I thought, okay, this is not for business places. But tell me, you see, because I, I guess I'm, I'm giving away my age. I'm a baby boomer. And so for me, social media has been a brand new concept. And so what would you say to women over 40? I'm going to leave it that way. Who feel, who consistently feel, but that's for my children, even though I'm a business owner, mm -mm, not quite for me. Yeah, so I'll share a little bit of my story. So I have to be totally honest and totally transparent. When social media first came out, I was not one of those persons who were interested on social media. I never got on Black Planet and there was a whole host of, you know, other social media platforms that, you know, all of my friends and, you know, just seemed to be interested in. And I was just like, why do I have to get on social media? I have no interest in letting people know what I do every moment of the day, blow by blow. People do not need to know what I eat for breakfast. They don't need to know where I'm going, who who I'm going out with and putting all of that personal detail about myself, you know, out there into the world. But my big shift came when I stepped on to my journey of entrepreneurship. And just like every other entrepreneur, we've heard the thing or or the thing that you need to do is network. We all need to get out there and we network. And one of the things that I noticed earlier on, as I started to attend networking events, people were really checking me out online. They wanted to know who Taria is, even before they decided to have a phone call or follow-up conversation with me. And so that was my indicator that I have to take a look at social media in a different light. And one of the things that I found was social media gave me the opportunity as a new entrepreneur to market and position my business like larger companies and larger organizations. And so I started to leverage the power of social media. And really and truly, I fell in love with it from that perspective. And then I kind of made it my business to start educating other entrepreneurs and how how they could effectively use social media in their business. Because like I said, it's one of the most powerful tools that we have accessible to us as entrepreneurs and thought leaders in our space. That was a transformation indeed, you know, Mm -hmm. realizing the importance, realizing that the effect that it would have on business owners. And as you said, um, realizing the impact it will have on business owners in the space that they are mm. in, you know. And yeah, it, it's taken me some time oh. to get there, but I am realizing the relevance because the first thing that someone does these days is Google you to see who you are. You know, you meet somebody, right. you Google exactly. them. Exactly. <laughs> you know? And that's one of the things that I say too. 
And that's why I'd like to talk about experience and the experience that we're creating on social, because one of the things that I've come to learn and understand and also appreciate is that people are checking us out before Mm -hmm. we know that they're checking us out. And Mm -hmm. I know definitely podcast, Paula, you could identify with this, you know, you're on social media, you're hosting, chatting with the experts, and then Mm -hmm. you're out there. And you might not think much sometimes of the things that you share. You might put out a message, you might do a post, you might drop a video, and Mm -hmm. you're looking at social media, and you might see your stats. You know, you might not have a like, or you might not have a comment, or your engagement might not be where you want it to be or where Mm -hmm. you think it should be. And then Mm -hmm. all of a sudden, out of the blue, you go to a networking event, you go out into your community, or someone reaches out to you on said platform and said, you know what? I've been listening. I've been following you. You said X, Y, Z. And this is how this has had an impact on my life. These are the things that I've been able to do since you've shared that message. And it's just that thing. It's the thing where social media, we have the ability to create these amazing experiences, you know, for our audience. And a lot of times we don't know that these things are happening, that this is the impact that we're having on people until someone you know, shows up and shares and say, this is how what you've shared has impacted me. And so that's one of my joys with social media. And that's why I encourage all of my clients, my audience is to never stop, you know, doing what you're doing, never stop serving. And I've come to look at social media, not so much as a selling tool. We all understand that you could position your products and your services out there as a great place, you know, for you to market your business. But overall, it is a serving tool. So when you take a look at social media, how do you serve every day on social media? I love especially the word you use, serving. Mm. How do you serve on social media? That sometimes gives it a different twist or, you know, we look at it from a different perspective, especially people who want to serve, but they don't quite know how to get out there. Yes. Social media is the answer from yes. what you're saying. Yes, it, it definitely is. Just being able to know that you have the ability to reach, you know, infinite amount of people and we touch them and we serve them through our messages that we put into the marketplace through our stories that we share our connecting conversations that's what i call it so i've started to make the shift and say we don't put content into the marketplace is connecting conversations so when we think about serving is getting really clear on who your divine client is and that's one of the things that i believe i believe that we are all called to serve, but to call to serve specific people. And it's up to us to put our divine light out there, our message into the marketplace and attract those people. And it's kind of different from what we've been taught in marketing. So in marketing, we've been taught that we have to go out there and find our ideal clients. Mm -hmm. We have to be on the hunt all the time. And it's not really about being on the hunt is showing up uniquely, you know, in your brand and your messaging and knowing your why and knowing who you're called to serve, and then attracting those people to your brand. You said it all. Knowing who you're called to serve through your connecting conversations. And it all wraps up with your brand and your marketing. So it's branding and marketing from a different angle on social media, a platform that many of us never thought would be connected with business. So talking about serving and connecting conversations, we are all emerging from this pandemic. How did that impact you? And how do you think social media helped or did not help when Hmm. we were all trying to cope with this? So, you know, very interesting that you asked that question. And the short answer, which I'll elaborate on in a little bit, the short answer is huge impact on my business and impact on my business in such a great way. So for me, 
I've actually been in the virtual space for quite some time before the pandemic. And I remember when I had the idea to take my business in the virtual direction. So I was one of those entrepreneurs that did a lot of stuff. When I looked at the model that I was running in my business, I spent a lot of time and I spent a lot of money just in physical spaces with my clients doing a lot of things. And and to be honest, it just was not cost effective for me at the time. And so I started to take a look at virtual models and I started to take a look at what areas in my business can I go virtual? And so one of the things I am a speaker trainer, so I do a lot of training around social media. So I turned the training part of my my business, you know, I, I did that virtual and I trained virtual um, for years. Then I started having client meetings virtually for years. Now, the, the funny thing about it is, is that it fit my lifestyle because one of the things that I decided that I wanted to do is I wanted to live the half and half lifestyle. And I know you're looking at me and you're like half and half, what's half and half? So I made a decision that I was going to spend half of my year in Maryland on the U.S. mainland, and then the other half in the Virgin Islands. And the only way that I was able to do that is that if I set my business up on a virtual model. And I remember, Paula, sharing that vision with others. Some people got it and others didn't. Some people thought that I was crazy. Like, why would you want to do that? And then the pandemic came and it shifted everything. And so I watched more and more entrepreneurs turn towards the virtual space and started to really take platforms like social media more serious in their business because it's, it became the, the only way that they could really keep their business alive. So as live stages and live events close down, a lot of entrepreneurs realized that they now had the power to create what we call their own virtual stage, their own virtual platforms. And so that was one of the things that boosted my business because I'm like, hey, guys, you know, I've been here for quite some time. <laughs> I could share a thing or two <laughs> with you. And so I've been able to make that transition easy for a lot of my clients. I love it. I love it. Here, yeah, guys, I've been here. I've always been here. So for you, the pandemic, it expanded your business. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, we know it was a horrible time, but a lot of people realized that, whoa, the world didn't stop because you couldn't right. physically meet for, you know, business meetings, coffee talks or whatever it was that you used for networking. The world mm -hmm. actually expanded. And yeah, that all I, was those just, I was just about to say that it expanded and kind of like what I like to say, it made the world smaller. So mm -hmm. if you could just have that vision in your mind where before a lot of times we probably wouldn't have considered doing business with someone in a different country. Mm -hmm. And because of the opportunity to go virtual, we're now connecting with people all over the world. And yes. we now have clients in spaces that we never thought that we would have had clients. And this is the opportunity that social media and being virtual has afforded us. We've looked at platforms like Instagram Takeoff. We've looked at the emergence of platforms like Clubhouse that mm -hmm. sprung up recently, TikTok. These are all places that people from all over the world have decided that, you know what, we're going to leverage these spaces to grow and expand our network and do business. And like I said, it's the ability for you to own and control your own platform, your own stage. So no longer do you have to wait for someone to give you permission to be on their stage. You have the ability to create your own stage. Loving it even more. You have the ability to create your own stage. And so talking about that and going back a bit, 
Would you say you've achieved all your dreams for, you know, when you came to the States, when you came to the mainland, as you mentioned, you came to go to college, you came to, you know, further your education. You had dreams and aspirations and, you know, like all of us young people, oh my gosh, what's out there? I'm listening to you, the excitement in your voice as you talk about social media, as you talk about how, you know, the, the, the world's boundaries have been broken down because of social media, because of video conferencing, which all came with more awareness during the pandemic. So have you realized some of your dreams and aspirations? That's a very interesting question. As I reflect on that, I have to say dreams have been expanded. So when I came to the U.S. way back in the 90s, my dream was actually to be a doctor. And so I was one of those persons who um, attended university, went to Howard University, like I mentioned before, and I actually did not complete my education in the time frame, the normal time frame. And so I started my family in the third year of my college education. And it actually took me 13 years to go back. The beauty of going back at such a later time, it gave me the opportunity to kind of define more of what I wanted and what I, how I was truly called to show up in the world. And so after 13 years later, of course, I changed my major. I got into marketing and I decided like, you know what? I want to start my own business. And so I've been on this entrepreneurial journey for quite some time now, over 10 years. And it has been such a wonderful journey. I, I have to say entrepreneurship is definitely the, the place where you look to when you want to grow, you know, in personal development, you want to up level your network, you want to show up as an influencer. Like I said, all, like I say it all the time, knowing that we are called to serve and what is it that, you know, you're going to, how are you going to use your gifts and your talents? I believe that we all have gifts and we all have talents. How are we going to use those things to bless others? And so that's the opportunity that entrepreneurship has afforded me. So it's, it's very interesting, very excited, and I'm on the journey and loving it. I wish you guys could see her face. It's lit, <laughs> it lit up as we talked about you know, realization of dreams. And, you know, I love the fact that you said, even though your um, completion of college was um, 13 years later, but you went with a different yeah. perspective, a different outlook. And here you are today enjoying where yeah. you have been, realizing that you have a mission to serve and you're mm -hmm. serving through your business. I love it. We began this show by talking about you being from the U.S. Virgin Islands. That's a Caribbean island. I mean, what's a fun fact about the U.S. Virgin Island that you can tell us? Oh, my gosh. A fun fact about the U.S. Virgin Islands that I could share. At least St. Thomas. At St. Thomas. Yes, yes, I could share. We have 36 beaches. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, that for me was an amazing fun fact that even though I grew up here as a child, I did not know that. I discovered that a few years ago. And I was just like, wow, 36 beaches? No one, who knew? No one told me. And so I have not had the opportunity to visit all 36 as yet, but <laughs> I'm getting there. So I've actually had the opportunity to visit beaches that I didn't even know existed on the island. So I have to say it's truly, truly a very beautiful place. Very beautiful. That's one of the islands on my bucket list. I was doing a list the other day and I was like, wow, I've visited less islands than I, th I thought I'd visited a lot more, but I haven't. So mm. I'll add St. Thomas right. to the list. Yes, you have, you have to. Um, great time of year to come. Christmas time is always a beautiful time in the islands 
we do a lot of celebrating. So if if you or anyone else in, in the audience knows about Caribbean culture, one of the things that Caribbean, Caribbean people know how to do is celebrate. So <laughs> we celebrate hugely, you know, for the Christmas holidays. We have Carnival, which is in April, end of April, beginning part of May, which just passed a couple of weeks ago. And so it's always, always a lovely time in the island. Awesome. Christmas in the Caribbean. Yes. yes. People, as you said, in the Caribbean like to party. So celebration, party, all yes. the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're coming to an end. Where can people, well, about to say, where can people find you online? But of course, then oh. that's not a question I should ask you. You're the social media strategist. So tell us all the social media platforms that you're on. Sure. <laughs> so um, one of the main places that you could connect with me is in, on Facebook on our Super Achievers Network. So if you go to Facebook, type in the search box, Super Achievers Network, knock on the door, let we'll let you in. And that's the community that we have for our entrepreneurs or super achievers, like I said, who want to show up in the marketplace and get their authentic message out there. Um, you could also find me on my business page, which is my name, Taria Hodge. You could find me on Instagram under my name, Taria Hodge. And then if you are on LinkedIn, you could also find me on LinkedIn at Taria Hodge. How simple is that? Very simple. I made it easy. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. So guys, you saw the social media strategist. See how easy she made it. You find her using her name. That could be a tip. Yeah, I was just about to say, so that's a, a very great tip for all of our entrepreneurs out there. When you create your social media handles, whether you're creating handles under your name, if you're using your brand, your name as your brand, or you have a brand name, it is best to reserve that those handles, if you could keep your handles the same. So it just makes it easier for everyone to find you across social media platforms. I love that. I love that. Oh boy, all good things. I say that every time. Every guest I interview, it's, you know, I, I lean in to listen to what they say because I learn new things. My mantra is to learn a new thing every day. And I, mm. anytime I have an interview, I go away saying, hmm, never thought about that. Oh, 36 beaches in St. Thomas. St. Thomas, yes. Yep. I need to come and visit and not that I'm, a, I'm not really a beach person. I like to see it, but I don't like to get in the water. Nope. <laughs> Look at her face. I wish you guys could see her expression. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a water, I'm a water baby. Um, a Korean is my sign. So mm -hmm. I'm a water sign. So I mm -hmm. absolutely love the water, love beaches. It's not a vacation if there's not a beach. Yeah, I agree. For me, the vacation is looking and admiring the water, and uh -uh, but I'm not getting into it. I'm not getting into it. I can't resist. <laughs> ah, so for my listeners, if you just listen to the amazing Taria Hodge, please head over to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you listen to your podcast and click subscribe. And also follow us. And if you are an immigrant woman from Africa or the Caribbean who now lives in Europe or lives in North America, please reach out to me on my website, which is www.chattingwiththeexperts.com forward slash contact us and let's chat. I would love to have you on my show. Thank you, Taria. This has been Thank fantastic. You for <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.